milestone of progress has been set, and science has made a reality of the six or eight corporations that control virtually everything we see, read, hear, and think in the United States. Doctors Warkin, every now and then uh, I like to put the calendar back and uh, remember another important occasion when you came to my office. You were a good salesman, and I was a good dreamer. We talked about broadcasting moving images by electronics. And I remember that I asked you what it would cost to develop an all-electronic television system. Do you recall your estimate? Of course I remember. I asked something like $100,000. Your estimate missed by quite a bit. It cost RCA more than $50 million to create, uh, develop, and introduce America's first all-electronic television system. But how well that money was spent. We succeeded in extending human sight far beyond the horizon. The human eye is a miraculous instrument, perceptive, sensitive, forever tuned to the pulsating wavelengths of light. Yet the eye is hemmed in by horizons. It cannot see over a hillside or beyond the haze of distance. I'm Andrew Smith, and I've uh, got this little video installation here at Good Gallery in North Portland. And it involves television sets that have been uh, gutted, ripped apart, and we've replaced the screens with spandex, and we are rear projecting. But most people don't know that. I'm just telling you that. Oh, shit! Whoa, that's even better. That's excellent. <laughs> Can I just like touch the screen there? Price. It's essentially a eulogy for the CRT, the cathode ray tube, which is a picture tube and a you know conventional old school TV. You know, this kind of pivotal invention that is uh, kind of on its way out. So it's this kind of self-referential thing where you've got TVs with images of TVs on the TVs. TVs and the TVs and the TVs and the TVs. And so I'm kind of capping the age of the cathode ray tube, juxtaposing images of the early age of television with the kind of twilight of television. You've got early images of television development, production, television science mixed with original images that I've taken of discarded television sets, television sets in the garbage, television sets on the side of the road, television sets in the back alley, television sets in the thrift store down the block. What we're trying to aim for here, along with the visual perspective, you want a, a 3D sound bed. So on the outside of the building, you know, we've got uh, two stereo speakers, and then inside the building, uh, we installed a subwoofer, and that uh, gives us the low-end rumble and uh, just helps to fill out the entire audio spectrum. So it, uh, you're getting total immersion. It's always constantly rolling, constantly developing. We want to watch a program of television, and we know that sometimes the program is not so good, but we continue to watch because we don't want to go home and to encounter the pain, the sorrow in us. It's generative in nature, meaning that we set up these systems with audio and video and allow them to kind of play with each other. So there's a certain amount of composing happening. And then there is a certain amount of reactive audio visual experience happening as well. Guys, have a great night. I think the beauty of generative art is that you're, you're, you're creating a landscape for something to live in, for a piece of art to just um, to do its own thing. You're creating some parameters for it. You're maybe saying this thing over here goes at this frequency and this thing over here goes at this frequency and you got another one over here. And when these things interact, they're all doing different things at different times, but they all end up kind of syncing up. You can get polyrhythms with both visuals and audio that happen and, and getting a weird synergy between being together and being separate that's really interesting. <laughs> all right. Am I still a bottle of wine?